AI agents are the latest hype. However, how well do they actually work? Will they solve all the world's problems? Instead of hyping them up, how about we actually have a look at them? In this video, we're going to look at Klein and understand how Klein currently uses Agenta capabilities to modify code for you. Let's have a look in Visual Studio Code. I've installed Klein as an extension and I'm connecting it to Anthropic via their API because this is what Klein recommends because Claude 3.5 Sonnet has pretty good agentic coding abilities. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to let Klein actually create a dummy REST server. So this is going to be a REST API that will allow us to send over books and retrieve books. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, create a fast API dummy REST API server with a get endpoint for retrieving books and a post endpoint for creating books. Save it in the REST server file. And this is going to show you some of the agenda capabilities of Klein already because it doesn't just give you a large language model output. It is also able to immediately edit a file that's inside of your editor. So you can see now it wants to read this file. I'll just approve it. There's not much in the file at the moment. So it can just start off from scratch. And indeed, the file is empty. So on the right, you can see now that it is creating that dummy API, which looks good to me. I'm going to save that. And the nice part about Klein is that it will also recommend some terminal commands that you can run to actually test whether this works. So let's go ahead and run that. And now you can already see that there's a small problem because I've not actually installed UVCorn here, but Klein can handle that pretty well. Let's see if there's a requirements.txt file. And it does exist. So we have to actually install the Python requirements. So this is a nice collaboration between me and Klein already, right? So I understand what's going on here, but I'm still letting Klein do its thing. And it's sort of working semi-autonomously. However, all we're doing here is just creating a dummy API. But the question really is, how is Klein even able to perform these kinds of terminal actions? Because a large language model, the AI system that's running here, cannot actually perform any actions at all. And this is really important to remember because there's a lot of people that say, you know, AI is autonomous and AI can do anything you ask it to. But actually the large language models themselves cannot perform any actions. The only thing they can do is return language. So how come that a system like Klein can actually perform terminal commands? Well, let's have a look at the system prompt that Klein uses. I have the system prompt here, although it's not very readable. So what I've done is I've used an AI system to make this prompt a lot more readable inside of this simple markdown file. And we can have a look at some of the tools that Klein basically has access to. So you can see that, for example, it has got access to execute command, read file, write to file, replace in file. But what actually are these tools? Well, first of all, you have to understand that these tools are referred in a system prompt together with specific tokens. So you can see here that if I search for tool name, that at the top of the prompt, it says that there's a certain structure for tool use. You need to enclose the tool name in this XML-like structure where you add all of the parameters and then you do slash tool name to end your tool invocation. So the large language model will simply respond with something like execute command with all the parameters. Then it will simply close that XML tag. What actually happens next is that there's a piece of regular code, maybe written in Python or TypeScript, that parses the output from the language model and then sees this XML tag, execute command. It then expects certain parameters to be passed in. And once it confirms that indeed this tool invocation is accurate with the right parameters, it will then, using regular code, actually perform a action. In this case, it would be executing a command in the CLI. Now, the way that Klein handles this kind of output from language models is by using MCP, the Model Context Protocol, which is a standardized set of communication tools developed by Anthropic, which allows a server with traditional code to parse an output from a language model to, for example, execute commands. So 
Here on the left, you can see that you first need a host with an MCP client. This is effectively Visual Studio Code with the client extension installed. And then for all kinds of different commands, like executing a terminal command or reaching an API service, you have different MCP servers. And we're actually going to create one in just a second. And these MCP servers can actually parse the response from a language model to then actually call a local API or even some kind of web API to a remote service. Again, the language model or the AI system is never actually executing that on its own. It's just some simple server logic that actually parses the language output to call a specific tool. To illustrate this, let's create a new tooling client that will call our dummy book API and submit a new random book. So back in our code, we're going to actually create a new chat. And in this chat, we're going to say, create a new tool that can call the REST server and create a random book. When you ask client to create a new tool, it will actually create a definition for a new small MCP server, which can again invocate your actual REST API. So I'm going to go ahead and approve it so it can read the REST server file. This way it can first learn how the API is formatted. And then as you can see, it's going to go to the client MCP folder and it's actually going to create a new server using an MPX command that will already template out a lot of the code for us. So it's okay to run this command. And then let's see what it comes up with. And now you can see in my terminal, it's starting to actually generate the server and we have to interactively give it a name. I'm gonna just go with the default server tester. And now I don't want to install the server for cloud.app because I just use client for this. And now it's already created the default server setup, but we actually do need to make sure that this MCP server uses Axios, which is a great requests library to actually make the request to create a book for our REST server. So we're going to go and run this command. And it's going to first install Axios as a dependency. And then it's actually going to re-implement the code of this server to create that request to create a book from our REST API. So once it's done with this proposal, we can see that if we scroll down, it eventually should have some kind of API request. There you go. So it does a post request to localhost 8000 slash books. And that is indeed correct because if we go to REST server, you can see that we do have that post request right there. And so I'm okay with saving this file. And now it wants me to build the MCP server because this needs to, of course, run alongside all of the other bits that Klein is relying on. So it's going to add the server to the MCP settings configuration file. This way it can always start alongside Klein. And in this case, actually this server was already configured before because I deleted it without removing it from the configuration previously. But you can see that Klein handles that as well. It's smart enough. And now it's actually going to use that tool on the server tester MCP server. And you can see that it made up the arguments according to what the REST server expects. So you can see here that there's a title, author, and a year with an optional description. And in the JSON body, you can indeed see title, author, and year. So it knows what format it needs to use to submit the request. And we're gonna go ahead and click approve so that it can use the tool to create this new book. And you can see that indeed, our server gives back a 201 that the book has successfully been created. Now, what this means is that you can always ask Klein to create a new book, and it will understand that it needs to call that specific tool. Again, because the language model is aware of all of the tools that your client has access to, and if it thinks that your request is related to one of those tools, then it will include the right XML parameters in its output, which client will recognize to send your request to the right MCP server. So before I start this new chat, I first want to clear out my open file because I just want client to use that MCP tool that we created instead of just reading the Python file and, for example, coming up with a terminal command. So I'm going to just say, I want you to submit a server request to create a new book in the horror genre. And now you can see that it's actually recommending to use this server tester MCP server. So on its own, it knows that this 
server is available because we have included it in our context for Klein. And the language model is smart enough to understand that our request would be best solved if it were to use that MCP tool. So we're going to go ahead and click approve because it wants to use test books endpoint once again with a book that is clearly in the horror genre. And we only have to click approve and you can indeed see that it returns a 201. And just to prove this even more, I want to now get a list of all of the books that we've generated so far. So what I can do is I can just say generate a curl request to get all the books we have created so far, simply using get slash books on port 8000. So I'm going to help it out a little bit here, just with not just with the context as it cannot read the server Python file. And now you can see that this is the curl request that it wants to execute. I'm going to click run command. And you can indeed see here that we've got two books, The Art of Programming and Dracula. Perfect. So in this video, I taught you how Klein works as an AI agent. If you want to learn more, I would love to teach you. So check out the description because I've got a link to my free AI engineering community. In this community, you can learn from a completely free one and a half hour AI course where I take you through building an AI system on your local machine from beginning all the way to the end. So I would love to see you there and discuss more.